Hello friends, welcome back to another Alpha League sesh with me, IVB. Today we're going to be covering Steak Wars. So if you've been hanging around the Nier ecosystem, you may have heard or seen references to Steak Wars. Especially on Twitter, a lot of us have been changing our names to SW with little blades and spades. So as much as this may reference a cult, Steak Wars is actually a two-month event designed to really cater to and integrate as many people as the community as possible. So during this video we're going to be having first an overview of what Steak Wars is and then we're going to start deconstructing some of the more interesting things happening on the Near Protocol right now at a technical level, how to participate in Steak Wars, an overview of the current challenges, frequently asked questions and much more. As always, there will be timestamps down below, so feel free to skip around any section that captures your interest. What is Steak Wars? Steak Wars is a two-month competition designed to onboard the next wave of validators to the Near Protocol. Throughout Steak Wars, there will be challenges that will test the technical aptitude and the commitment to the community from participants, and by the end, winners will join the ranks of validators on the near protocol so the too long didn't read or i guess too long didn't see would be this is a unique opportunity to be able to learn and train yourself on how to run a validator to connect with a community of like-minded people and to set up your near validator on mainnet for the very lucky and prestigious winners of this contest the Neo Foundation will be delegating $4.5 million to make sure that all these new validators have their seat price and are able to stay online. So, with that overview, let's start diving deep into why Steak Wars and why now. With Steak Wars, there's a couple of things that we need to know. So, as some of you may have heard, Neo is a proof of stake sharded blockchain. What does that mean? Proof of stake simply means you put some skin in the game. You need to lock some near to be able to validate transactions. And if you're an evil, malicious mother, we take you out. So with Nier's unique and novel design called Nightshade, which I will be linking in the show notes below, and you can go read. It seems like we have solved the scalability challenge. So the way that we'll be doing this going forward is parallel processing. There will be multiple shards and they will be able to expand and contract based on demand. So on the journey to fulfilling this vision of internet scalability, cheap and fast transactions, we are currently going from phase zero because technical minded people and geeks like to start counting from zero. On phase zero, we currently have four shards. And of the four shards, there are 100 validators. Now this is where it gets interesting. So of the 100 validators, they're currently multitasking. That's my terminology. So these 100 validators are currently producing both the blocks and the chunks. And this is important because going into phase one, these validators start to specialize. That's also my terminology. What that means is that we will be introducing a special kind of validator called chunk only producers. What that means going forward is that we're going to have these new different type of validators that are going to be shard specific and they will be validating the transactions just in that one shard and then bundling all the transactions in one shard and passing that on to the normal block producer validators. As we make the transition into that phase one, what that means is that the current validator set is expanding from 100 up to 300. So now we have the challenge of how to expand the validator set by 67% in a safe and secure way. Enter the key players of Stake Wars. So Stake Wars is being led by Pagoda. Pagoda is the most recent branding and regrouping restructuring of Near Inc. Pagoda basically looks after all the engineering and core infrastructure and Pagoda has been largely responsible of writing the code to implement phase one of decentralization, the, the chunk only producers as mentioned. So from Pagoda's point of view, there are some very simple clear objectives. The first one is to push the code live on mainnet. The second one is to test the code thoroughly. And the third one is to ensure that there are enough validators that are capable and committed to the near network 
so that you know the network can actually grow and sustain that. In order to fulfill those three objectives, Pagoda has invited a range of community projects to help them structure and arrange the challenges. So the first one of these is Open Shards Alliance. Open Shards Alliance is the community or the organization of OGs. They helped organize the previous two stake wars. And it is basically a network or a coalition of current validators and upcoming iAspiring validators. So they have a bunch of resources for validators. They're providing constant support as a side node. These guys are so hardcore that they've actually been running their own testnet called Guildnet. And on that testnet, they've been running a bunch of experiments, such as having more shards, more transactions, more validators, etc. So we can think of Open Shards Alliance as that very niche, advanced group of validators. And they're now coming on board to make sure that the next generation of validators is brought up to speed and that all the wisdom captured from the previous competitions is now replicated. The next community participant and organizer is Metapool. Disclosure, I am technically a Metapool employee. Metapool is the first and, in my opinion, best liquid staking solution of the near protocol. Metapool is also a very close partner to Open Shards Alliance. So we have been supporting Open Shards Alliance since the very, very beginning. And due to the nature of liquid staking, we have also been very close partner to most of the validators. So a really quick overview on liquid staking. And this is going to be really important as we look into the other community organizers and the way in which the NIR Foundation is going to distribute the 4.5 million NIR. So with liquid staking up until now, most of the focus has been on the benefits to the user. And those are amazing. So if I'm a user, I can stake my NIR with, say, a Metapool, and I receive a liquid staking uh, token or asset back. In this case, it would be ST NIR. So up until now, most of the focus has been on the DGENs like myself and on deploying the ST NIR further out in the DeFi ecosystem. So for instance, you can deploy your ST NIR to provide liquidity on ref finance and farm or you can deploy that on lending platforms such as borrow cash and borrow money against it and leverage. However, Stake Wars really puts into perspective the additional benefit, in my opinion, a fundamental benefit of liquid staking. Because when people deposit their assets with Metapool or other liquid staking providers, the liquid staking provider automatically spreads that near across as many validators as possible. So on the Metapool website, for instance, you'll see that we're currently spreading to 81 validators out of the current 100. And this is important because we take into account the Nakamoto coefficient. That is a calculation that looks into how decentralized and how resilient is the network. So among other things, we take into account the validator's uptime and runtime, but we also take into account the level of concentration of NIR on a handful of validators. If you go to the NIR block explorer, you can actually go to nodes validating, and when you click on it, you will see a couple of, you will see some data that I find really interesting. So there's the NIR total supply, there's how much has been staked in total, and then as you start scrolling, you'll see all the validators, the total amount delegated to them, their fees, and the percentage accumulated to them. So you can see that the top seven validators have 33% of the total delegation. And there is very timely and appropriate disclosure here that delegating to the validators below the top 7% improves the decentralization of the network. Now, where it gets really interesting is if we scroll all the way down to the bottom 100 validators, you'll see that some of them have just enough to keep their seat. So the seat price is probably hovering the 180,000 validators. We can actually see one here getting kicked out. Awkward. And I'm only mentioning all of these because some of you may recall that in January, I think, give or take, Proximity Labs staked 1.5 million year with Metapool. And recently we've been doing some analysis 
and those 1.5 million Neo are actually instrumental in keeping a lot of the smaller 40% validators online. Those would be the last 40 validators that joined the network during the last Stake Wars competition. Why am I mentioning all this? Because the 4.5 million Neo that the Neo Foundation is staking is going to be spread across liquid staking providers to make sure that we delegate to all these new validators to keep them online and keep the network secure. It is very important that if we're pumping or we're dumping, if we're in a bear, if we're in a bull market, there aren't large amounts of people staking or unstaking in a way where validators could get kicked out and the validator count could increase or decrease dramatically. This is very important for the stability of the network. Moving on to the other community organizers, we've got Linear, which is a much more recent liquid staking provider as well. And there is Everstake. They are pretty big in the core infrastructure provider. They're currently running a validator on the Near network. So with that quick overview, let's keep going. Stake Wars, as I mentioned before, is going to be a two month competition divided into two main sections. The first one, stage one, is going to have a dedicated testnet called Shardnet. Shardnet is expected to be unstable as it is going to be the first release of this major upgrade and it will be used predominantly to thoroughly test and make sure that all the minor bugs are ironed out. The second phase will be on the near regular testnet. If you're interested in joining as a near chunk only producer, there are a few links that are important to you. All of this will be on the description below. The first one would be the type form where you just register as a chunk only producer. And then I will also be linking to the GitHub with all the information. And the joke to me as a very mild technical person is that this is the first challenge. Well, let's call this challenge zero. <laughs> because if you don't know how to navigate your way through GitHub, you're not going to find the information. So on the GitHub, you'll find all the information and the challenges are on a folder. And they have been listed in a very nondescript way. 001, 002, 003. There are two types of challenges. There's going to be the core challenges. Core challenges are coming mostly from the Open Shards Alliance, and we have labeled them as core because they basically highlight that this is what is expected of every validator to be able to do in order to be able to run a node. And this would be the basic sort of skills and competency involved in maintaining your node on mainnet. So the focus here would be to train users to be able to prove that they can do it and to replicate real world conditions. And then we've got optional challenges. So optional challenges are submitted by community organizers. Participants are not expected to do every optional challenge. Optional challenges can be a little bit more playful, so they may involve more developer skills, while traditional stake wars challenges, the core challenges are more systems admin. They may involve things around the community, such as content creation or organizing events. They are optional because we want to give as much creative freedom to the community organizers, such as Metapool, to come up with ways to engage the community. The only thing that is going to be important here is to know that while all of these challenges may be optional and some of these challenges may seem too technically complex to dedicate time to, or they may seem unrelated to the task at hand, say if it is content creation. The important thing here is that we are encouraging everyone to at least attempt as many challenges as possible, especially if they seem complicated, because we see this as a really good opportunity for you to connect with the validator communities, to learn new things and to help each other out. The second thing is that you may see here in the rewards, there is all of these challenges, core and optional, will earn you points. So let's move into the point structure. There's going to be two types of points that challenges can give you, and it could be one or both. There is the delegated near points, and there is the unstaked near points or liquid near points. What these two types of points are referring to are for the unstaked near points, this is near that you're eligible to receive unlocked at the end of the competition. 
And the core focus for these unstaked near points is twofold. The first one, we want to make sure that every participant on stake wars is able to recover back the costs of participating. So for instance, if you're renting cloud server providers for two months and you're spending anywhere between 100 or to $500 per month on these uh, virtual private servers, by completing the core challenges and maintaining your node online, you should be able to recover those costs. The second focus for this unstaked near would be special challenges where participants go above and beyond. We really want them to be able to be rewarded in a separate track to the delegated near points. Now the second type of point is called delegated near points. Delegated near points are really interesting because these basically count towards near delegated to your node. If you were to be successful and you are given a seat. So I'll just really quickly refer to a recent Pagoda tweet where this is clarified. So every delegated near point maps to 500 near delegated to your validator on mainnet. Every unstaked near point maps to one unlocked near tokens. And the final thing to clarify with the way that the points are delegated is we've structured the points in such a way that approximately a minimum of 50 Delegated near points should be enough to have your seat, or I guess win stake wars to be in the top 200. But naturally, this is competition. And this is where the war element comes in. Because people are going to be battling it out. The more people that join the competition, the higher the minimum number of points required to be in the top 200. So for instance, at the moment, there are 300 people participating. And there's somewhere between 200 and 300 nodes up for grabs. This is looking pretty good. And in fact, I would say that this is looking amazing if you've been sitting on the sidelines and considering joining because you have a pretty good chance of joining and just doing really well and earning that node. Let's say that by the end of the competition, we have 800 people participating. That's when you really start to appreciate the importance of accumulating as many delegated near points as possible. Now, the last thing I want to say before I let you go is we are meeting uh, daily now, the coordination team, and we will be meeting fairly frequently throughout the two months. Challenges will be released throughout the two months. We're targeting a pace of two per week. So we do have a lot of scope to adapt the nature of the challenges, the difficulty, based on how many people are joining, how the points are being accumulated, the feedback that we receive from the community. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you've been wondering whether Stake Wars is for you, the answer is yes. And let me know in the comment section below if you have already joined, what your experience has been so far, if you're considering joining. As I mentioned, I am currently part of the organizing team through Metapool. So I'm more than excited to have a chat one-on-one -on -one with anyone that needs assistance. I'm also going to use this opportunity to shill my own podcast. So if you didn't know, I am the host of the Wild User Interviews podcast, where we dive deep into conversations with some of the OGs and builders of the ecosystem. If you're interested, episode 22 is really good. On episode 22, I have a chat with Blaze from the Open Shards Alliance. And there's a lot of insight there and tips for participants. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.